Look at the mess that I made! Hi Gorge, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm in a good mood, I'm feeling great. Been having a rough week, weird stuff has been going on, but I'm in a good mood and I'm feeling good. A few days ago I had a flare up, but I'm better now and I'm ready to work. If you're new here, hi! My name is Sarah Labar and most Fridays I sit down and show you a craft or something crafty that I've been working on. Here we publish painting videos, sewing tutorials, easy gardening tips and all sorts of arts and crafts. If you're a crafty person and you want to keep learning about new ways you can DIY, then hit that subscribe button because this is the channel for you. Even though I'm super excited for this week's project, I feel like it may be more like an attempt at a project because I'm working with materials that I've never used before and I'm making a romper from this Simplicity vintage pattern from 1982. So without further ado, let's take a gander at it. This vintage simplicity pattern was printed in 1982, so it's almost 40 years old. I remember my mother having made at least one of these cutesy little rompers years before I was even born. This has been sitting in her stash for decades before she decided to pass it on to me. So this is not just a vintage sewing pattern, it's also a family heirloom. I'm childless both by circumstance and by choice, but I hope that in a few more decades I too will have somebody to pass this on to. So far, I found that most, if not all, of my sewing projects have a strong history-bounding element to them. What is history-bounding, you ask, and how does it differentiate from, say, vintage fashion? Well, according to fellow YouTuber Morgan Donner, who is actually credited for democratizing the term, history-bounding is not for anyone who wants to wear fully historical head-to-toe outfits, but for anyone trying to balance their love for older fashions with the needs of their modern life. And to quote the wise words of Harlem-based jazz singer and band leader Dandy Wellington, vintage styles, not vintage values. That being said, the 1980s might be a little later than the periods where history bounders usually look for inspiration. This pattern was printed in 1982, which makes it almost 40 years old. So this at the very least qualifies as vintage fashion and strongly borders on history-bounding territory. And what piece of clothing, might I ask, might be more quintessential of the 80s than this colorful, stretchy and super synthetic little jumpsuit? There are two looks in this pattern set. There's our romper right here and then there's a cute little sundress as well. Of course I'm choosing to do the romper but I want to make a few modifications before I start cutting into fabric. First, vintage patterns tend to not feature pockets which in itself is an utter shame so my plan is to add some. I want to make diagonal side front pocket openings like that. Let's pretend that the tip of my scissor here is a pocket opening for one second. I'm gonna trim the pocket opening with the same elastic that I'll be using for the bust here and the waist. The problem with this kind of pocket is that it needs to be laid on a side seam and my pattern piece as you can see here, it has no side seam. It's one contiguous piece for both the front and the back of the leg. In order to accommodate for my pockets, I'll need to split my leg in two at the middle, thus creating a side seam. Secondly, it's really no use even owning shorts where I live. Most of the time it's way too cold to be wearing shorts anyway, and when it isn't, you literally cannot step outside without being assaulted by dozens of giant flesh-biting flies. I don't know their exact name, I don't want to know it, I just call them spicy bitches because that's what they are. Next. So anyway, my point is that I need to make this romper long-legged. I'm gonna finish the ankle cuffs with the same elastic 
trim. And finally, I've gotten very thin due to chronic illness, up to the point where even my corsets are getting too roomy. So even the petite, très petite Miss Jeune Femme size, whatever it is, uh, it's too large for me, it's too roomy for me. So in the end, what started as the original short-legged romper pocketless pattern with no side seam became this long-legged slimmer romper, complete with a nice set of pockets that will be set on the newly made side seams, so I got four pattern pieces instead of two. For the materials, I wanted to get as close to the cover photo as possible, albeit adapting it to my knees and my color palette. An autumn color palette suits me more than this quite cold yellow, so I went with this stretch action wear fabric in a warmer kind of mustardy ochre yellow. I paired it with this rainbow one and a half inch wide elastic band. I think the colors offer a nice contrast and the white stripe in the middle, I think it offers a nice vibrancy to the whole ensemble, so I'm gonna go with this. I've already cut all my pattern pieces and got ready to start sewing, but before that I went ahead and made some tests. And thank god I did because wow I am not good at machine sewing stretch fabric. So I cut myself two pocket pieces in my fabric and started sewing it with the machine with the intent of using different widths of zigzag stitches and different machine feet until I found the right balance and the right settings. So far I have to admit that I have not. Look at the mess that I made! This is supposed to be completely flat. This isn't supposed to be all curly like that so I made a horrible horrible mess. So I started by using this roller foot right here. I thought the little rolling pins in here would kind of help feeding the fabric without distorting it. I didn't have much success so I went with a walking foot. So yeah, basically I tried binding my edges with the zigzag stitch with a walking foot and look at the mess. I think I could not have done any worse. So I think maybe I just have to face the fact that I'm just not good at it. Yet. I'm sure that with practice I'll end up getting the hang of it, but for now I think I just have to resort to sewing this whole garment by hand with just a needle and some thread. I've already done one leg off camera. I got my pocket here. Next step is making the second leg and show you how I done it. And obviously get rid of this monstrosity. <laughs> front and a back piece for my pocket. The front here is folded at an angle towards the outside of the pocket. So later they'll be stitched together on top of one another. This part here will be visible in the pants. This becomes the side seam right here. First I need to stitch this fold in place for hand stitching. Obviously I cannot do a running stitch because thread does not stretch, but back stitching does allow the fabric to retain its elasticity. So this is what I'm gonna do. Next, I'm trimming the excess to about a quarter inch. Let me show you how to bind this edge using only hand stitches. I'm passing my needle through the first stitch, like in the middle of the first stitch. I hope the camera does pick it up. But I'm not going where I previously stitched, I basically passed my needle in between the two other piercing points. This is just so that there are more anchor points through the same seam. This is gonna make it much more solid. I got my needle through the first stitch and I'm going a second time through the same spot in the same direction. I'm going through the second stitch and I'm going back this time. And I'm doing it again, thus creating a second loop right besides the first one. Next loop into the next stitch. 
So you see this kind of creates like a little roll of fabric. This neatly tuck the seam allowance into kind of a little roll. This is what I'm gonna do through the whole length here. This is the front part of my pocket and this is the back. I'm simply going to superimpose the two pieces, sew them all around. They're all rolled up so I'm gonna pin them but I'm basically gonna stitch all around this with my back stitch and then I'm gonna bind the edges with the same technique that I used for that edge right here. The pocket is finished and I'm ready to assemble it with the front leg panel. This panel is cut at the same angle as the front pocket piece. I'm folding and pinning my seam allowances and then I'm bringing this in line with the pocket edge. I will backstitch these edges together, making sure that I'm not closing the pocket hole. I'm then cutting myself a length of elastic and I'm using it to trim the pocket opening. My goal is to make it as symmetrical as possible with the other leg. Alright, this is the next day now. Yesterday I've done the pocket and I've started back stitching the side seam of this leg from top here and we're almost down to the bottom already. So I think I'm gonna set up the camera to finish back stitching this seam and maybe I'll have enough time today to start working on my inseam as well. Obviously I need to bind my seam allowances and then I'm gonna put the two two legs together and move on to the top. To attach the legs together, I'm turning one wrong side up and inserting the one that's right side up into it, pinning them in order to join them at the crotch. I'll sew and finish this crotch seam with the usual back stitch and finishing stitches. Good morning again. It is yet another day in my household. So yesterday evening, it was too dark to film, but I finished sewing and binding the crotch here. And I've also started working on my top. There is one seam, that's the back seam right there, so I sewed it and I binded it. The next thing I gotta do is to join the pants with the tube at the waist using the elastic. So I'm measuring and cutting a length of elastic against my waist. I'm making sure it's tight enough while still being comfortable. I'm sewing it in a loop on the machine, right sides facing each other, because I want to make sure that this can hold the tension right. I'm trying it out against my waist to make sure it's tight enough, and then I'm trimming the seam allowances and binding them as well. So this makes my waistband. I'm marking the front, the back and the sides on both the elastic and the pants, and I'm joining them together at these points. 
I'm then pinning around to make sure that the fabric is evenly distributed around the elastic band. And then I'm basically back stitching everything in place. As you can see, I've put a safety pin through the elastic to firmly attach it to my pants. This allowed me to hold the band really taut so that the fabric gets distributed smoothly. Next, I'm repeating the last few steps, this time to evenly distribute and then backstitch the tube top to the same waistband. The upper edge of the tube is designed to be held in place with another elastic band. I'm measuring and cutting myself a chest band with the reminder of the elastic, therefore running out of it before I got the chance to make ankle bands. I got a solution for that, but before I get there, I'm repeating the same steps I took with the waistband. I'm machine sewing and finishing the elastic into a loop, right sides facing each other. I'm evenly distributing the fabric onto that loop, and I'm backstitching everything smoothly. Good morning again. It is yet another day. I swear it has been far many more days that I usually can send on one single project, but hey, the top and the pants have been attached together with the elastic waistband, and I've also fitted the top elastic here. I don't know how I did it, but unfortunately I made the top elastic slightly too large. I should have checked before I fitted the elastic onto the top of the tube. And honestly, I couldn't be bothered to remove it and fit it again. So instead I made a dart around the back seam. See? I don't think people will notice it, honestly. So, so all that's left to do now, I've got to finish this seam allowance and those two seam allowances as well. Unfortunately, I didn't order enough of the rainbow elastic. That's all I got left. That's not even enough for one single ankle cuff. So instead, I'm gonna put this elastic from my stash. I'm gonna make this into sort of a hidden elastic cuff. So the white isn't actually gonna show. I'm gonna get back to work and hopefully we'll be able to wear the garment soon. As always, I would like to thank you so, so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're interested in visual arts, painting, easy gardening tips, lumberjacking and sewing tutorials, then hit that subscribe button because this is the channel for you. We post on Fridays and sometimes in between as well. Also, you can check out my Instagram at Gallic Anglicae Regina. I'll put a link to it in the description box down below. Until next time, please drink plenty of water, please take care of yourself, and I will see you soon. Bye!